I'd like you to join me now on a whistle-stop tour of Tunbridge Wells in the future as we up Periscope and fast forward to Tunbridge Wells in 2050 or hashtag TW in 2050. So we're on the edge of change that's comparable to the rise of human life on Earth. A pretty bold statement from a gentleman called um, Werner Vinge. And what this centres around is the fact the, the exponential increase in computing hardware and software and the impending onslaught of artificial intelligence and super artificial intelligence. But as the last speaker, it would be remiss of me to bore you with technology and science. So I wanted to keep it upbeat and light and just spend five or ten minutes giving you a snapshot of what that might look like in Tunbridge Wells jumping forward. So look around, it's now 2050, and not much has apparently changed. The twaddles and the twattles and the BNIs and the Chamber of Commerce people are all, thankfully, still prepared to meet face to face. It's not all through digital means. And they're doing what we do best in Tunbridge Wells, which is lunch. And what better venue? Lots of hangouts where we could go, but the, the facade of the Royal Wells Hotel looks pretty intact in 2050. But facade is perhaps a good word for it. Because if we step inside, it's quite a different face. We've got the gleaming sun of the midday beckoning us in for lunch. This is a venue that was frequented in the 19th century by Princess Victoria. So, you know, good heritage, and it will still be there for many, many years to come. But as it beckons us in, in 2050, it's quite a different face that actually greets us. It's the face of Gemma, our actroid humanoid robot. Welcome to the Royal Wells Hotel. Not just some robotic voice, but she actually can sense our emotions, our tone of voice. She can actually act as the perfect proponent of customer service in the future by not actually responding to that, but always having the right kind of face. She has a colleague. She beckons us in to the dining room and her colleague, Roberta, offers us our favourite tipple, takes our payment by Bitcoin, digital currencies, and says to us, what would you like for drink, ladies? A Merlot, perhaps? Make mine a large. I'll have a rather large, it's been a bit of a tough day. I'm not driving. Google Chauff is parked up on the common up the top there. He's my self-driving car, so it doesn't really matter how many glasses of Merlot I actually have, because I'm pretty safe. In fact, I'm not doing very much driving at all at the moment, and perhaps a little bit too much drinking. I've got a pretty clear diary this afternoon. My diary's been freed up quite a bit, because I've got Giles doing all of the uh, chores for me, my hoovering, all my cleaning, cleaning the windows. In fact, in the Royal Wells, all of the waste, all of the artificial intelligence is cleaning, managing all of the services, and Tunbridge Wells is beginning to look like one of the smart cities that's being predicted for the future. Hubby Stan is beginning to rather like the cooking of my other robot member of staff, and he's quite taken by some of the fads, the insect fortified snacks, and the algae burgers. He seems to be quite partial to them, and he's also quite happy to go with this computer implant that's actually making him reduce the amount he drinks and eats to actually kind of stabilise it. I find it a little bit boring myself, but Howie Stan seems quite taken with it. So this is a world that's a pretty diverse world to the one we know now. Today's theme for TEDx in Royal Tunbridge Wells is diversity, and diversity to me has all different connotations, but in its essence, it's about change. And we are looking at a very, very different world. The law of accelerating returns basically means, you know, we're going to achieve potentially a thousand times the progress of the 20th century. What we have to get used to is thinking of change at a much faster rate than the change that we're looking back on when we look at the past century. So in our lifetimes, whether you like it or not, artificial superintelligence is coming. And I'm in my sort of day job, I, I run a PR and social media agency and I work with lots of local business people, London business people, international business people, and sometimes, they're not all male, but I'm going to use this term, they get classed sometimes, not all of them, there's a couple of exceptions in the room, as Mr. Pale, male, stale. And these are people that are burying their heads in the sand. <coughs> 
They're not even getting prepared to adapt to Twitter and Periscope, the latest social media platform. They're burying their head in the sand and wanting to just do business in a very traditional way. And unfortunately, if you continue to do that, you, know, you will become a fossil, you will be extinct. So it's really important to adapt and to take advantage of all the different opportunities that are out there for you. And the kind of super artificial intelligence I'm talking about might be a small you know, computer that's just a little bit smarter than our normal brains to one that's trillions of times smarter than us. The purpose of, of super intelligence, of artificial super intelligence, it progra it's programmed with the goal of continually increasing its own power. So we are going to be looking at you know, such huge change. So if you think of our brains and their abilities to invent things like Wi-Fi, imagine what will be possible in the future with something that's a hundred, a thousand, or even a billion times smarter than us. The Turing test. This is the one perhaps that you know, most people get hung up on, looking back to our two robots there a moment ago. This is the point at which the computer exhibits intelligent behaviour that's indistinguishable from human behaviour, where well, you've actually got a robot almost identical. You're seeing in Tokyo now um, robots serving drinks in bars and clubs, covered in skin, actually made to look you know, like human beings, like ourselves. So what does it mean for you, for me, for our children, for our grandchildren? It's two sides of the Bitcoin, two flip sides of that. The one side, perhaps, our greatest dream, the other, a potential nightmare. Think back to last year's Transcendence film as an example of that. The eminent British physicist, Professor Stephen Hawking, talks about some of the fantastic sides to what this might bring, the super, super artificial intelligence, the potential to eradicate war and poverty and also disease. And I, in my first TEDx talk last year, I talked about you know, being a full-time mum and going back to work when the children were young and the guilt that comes with that and looking forward to robots in the future who would do the chores. But now as I've got that little bit older, the thought of injecting young blood into your tissues that can actually reverse the ageing process is something that I quite like the sound of. Um, so, you know, all of these kind of aspects are, if you like, the good side of what artificial superintelligence might bring. But there is a darker side, which is the one, again, that Hawkins talks about, where humanity faces an uncertain future as technology learns to think for itself and adapt to its environment. An area where we might see potentially the end of humanity. So for me, and I've got a client who's involved in this area of technology, on a parallel universe, I'm relieved to see the accelerating pace of space exploration. And it may well be that we need to move planets. So you think of Lunar Mission 1 to Mars, you think of what um, you know, Virgin are doing with Galactic and all of these different areas. You know, we might need to move to different planets if we don't take control and halt the progress, which is almost impossible to do, or at least have a say in what's actually happening. So today's just been a, a really um, light-hearted look at what I believe is possibly one of the most important topics for our future. And I'm a big fan of social media, and I'm a big fan of the power that social media gives us to have our voice. For the first time, we've reversed the trend, and it isn't the brands that own the world. We as consumers, we can do great customer service, we can complain, we can have our voice heard through YouTube, through Twitter. And we have to make a choice, and we have to ensure that these programs, these computer programs, are actually programmed with the right values. And if you think of what's happening with the Islamic State, you look at what's happening in the world of cybercrime, incredibly, there's very little serious research being done into this topic. And our governments all over the world are still catching up with technology and are still obviously fighting terrorism. It's taken even the police in the UK years to just catch up with dealing with Facebook and, and Twitter. So my request to you all is to not be passive consumers and to do your own research and to have your voice 
and to actually see what we can do so that we can protect planet Earth for the future. But if all fails, at least we know potentially in 2050 we might be able to up sticks and move on to another planet. So thank you all very much. Thank you.